Well, hello, good people. You know, a few of you have asked me to cover VAEs and LoRa in Easy Diffusion, so that's what we're going to cover today. So let's start off with VAEs. What it stands for is Variable Auto Encoder. Simply, they make your images more vibrant, more crisp, and they could even improve the details of the hands and faces. Nowadays, a lot of models have them baked into the actual CKPT or Safe Tensor file, but some models will still suggest for you to download certain ones. For example, if we go onto Civit AI and under Cetus Mix, one of the models that is fairly well known for anime, you'll see on this line it recommends Pastel Waifu Diffusion VAE. And typically these would be hyperlinked, so you could just click on it and download it and put it into the appropriate folder. Now before I show you how to do that, here's a quick example of how you can benefit from a VAE. The model I used for this is called Anything V5, and this was the image generated without a VAE. Now here's the image using Anything V3 VAE. <laughs> That's a mouthful. And as you can see, compared to the other that was very washed out, it almost looks like a raw photo. But using the VAE has given it more saturation, more contrast. And if you look at the eyes, let me zoom in here. If you look at the details of the eyes, they're not perfect, but greatly improved on. So let's do the before and after. So you see how it's kind of roughed up here, very faded. With the VAE, it gives it a bit more detail. So it's not a huge difference, but it can help the overall look of your image. Now here's another VAE that further enhances the color and contrast. If I switch between the two, you see that there's quite the dramatic shift in contrast and color. Now the eyes get a little wonky and even the mouth changes quite a bit here. So those are some things you have to watch that certain VAEs work better with particular models. The one that's on now is an MSE type of version that's fairly well known and kind of a general VAE that works on pretty much any model. And I tend to gravitate towards this one because it gives you sort of a fake high dynamic range type of look. As always, I'll link all these VAEs in the description below for you to try out yourself. Now when it comes to Easy Diffusion, you're going to see a section here for custom VAE. If I click on the drop down, I've only got three here that I've loaded. The last one I have here highlighted is the one that I typically use most of the time. It's a good all-purpose VAE. Now once you've downloaded the VAE file, you just have to find your models folder. You may not have the stable Diffusion UI Windows folder. I kept it in its original location just to separate things on my root folder. So if that's the case, you're looking for stable diffusion UI in your root directory, which is usually your C drive, then you'll find a folder called models. Within the models folder, you're going to see a folder for VAE and a folder for LoRa, which we will look at in a few minutes. So make note of this address on your computer. Once I open up that folder, you see all the VAE files in here. So to show you this in Easy Diffusion, I'm going to run anything V5 as the model. We're going to do this without the VAE file. So looking at these images, I think this one would be a good example. So if we look at the seed there, let's toggle off random so that we start with the seed. And then under custom VAE, I'm going to select the general all-purpose one. Let's go ahead and generate four images and we'll see how much of a difference it makes. Now in this case, in all honesty, it's not a huge difference using this particular model. You could really see the differences in the blush on the face here. See how it's a lot more red as opposed to the image done without the VAE. And you get more of a contrasty feel on the image used with the VAE. Deeper blacks and shadows, for example, where this one has more of a faded, washed out look. But personally, I still quite like this image as well. So it's not much of a big difference for this particular image. But if you recall the earlier example that I gave you, that one had a greater variation between the ones done with or without the VAE. 
Now let's talk about LORAs. So first you have your CKPT models or safe tensor models that are trained on particular styles. Then you have textual inversions that are lower in file size, but also trained on a particular style. LORAs are actually kind of in the middle of a CKPT model, safe tensor model, and a textual inversion. Unfortunately, Easy Diffusion can't do the training, but you can use the LoRa files within Easy Diffusion. But first, let me show you what you need to do in Easy Diffusion so that you can use LoRa's. So if you look at the top corner here, you'll notice that my version is the beta version. In order to use the LoRa's, you gotta use the beta version. So keep in mind, it may be unstable at times. Personally, I haven't had any issues. So all you need to do is go into your settings tab here and towards the bottom here, you want to click on beta channel. You'll see this icon here and you want to toggle this on. Next, you want to toggle test diffusers on as well. As you see here, it says use upcoming features like LoRa in our new engine. Once you're done, click on save and you'll have to restart Easy Diffusion. So shut it down and restart Easy Diffusion. You want to double check that you have the LoRa drop down here, as I showed you earlier. And once you have that, you're good to go to use them. So here in Civit AI, if you go to the top to the filter section, click on that and you'll be able to filter it just by LoRa's. So I'm going to click on LoRa and you see it's going to reshuffle and show you all the LoRa files that are available. I only have a few of them that I've been experimenting with. This is one that I quite like. The one below it, EPI Noise Offset, is one that I like to use as well. And I encourage you to read the details here just to get an idea of what to expect and what's needed for the LoRa to work. For example, for this particular LoRa, you want to use words like dark studio, rim lighting, two-tone lighting, dimly lit, low key, etc. You don't have to use them all, but you can combine them if needed. What's great about Easy Diffusion, there's a slider they provide, so there's no need to put this in your prompt. If you were using something like Automatic 1111, you would have to enter this. And the way it works, really, you would just put this at the end of your prompt within the angled brackets. You'd put LoRa colon, the name of the LoRa, colon one. If you use one, think of it as 100%. If you wanted to do 50% of the effect, you would just put 0 0.5. And I'll show you how that works in Easy Diffusion. Similar to the models, you can download the file here. And you'll notice this one's only 77 megabytes. So it's much lower than an actual CKPT or safe tensor file, which can be seven, eight gigs sometimes. And remember earlier when we were talking about VAE files, you'll find your LoRa folder within the models folder as well. Once I open up this file folder, you'll see all my LoRa files in here. Once you've downloaded the LoRa files, you just have to drag and drop them into this folder. And once again, shut down Easy Diffusion, restart it. Once you've reset Easy Diffusion, you want to come down to the LoRa menu here and select the LoRa that you want to use. I'm going to select EPI Noise Offset. This LoRa is going to give me more of a darker image, more dramatic, deeper blacks, more contrast, that type of thing. And in the prompt, I entered the trigger words low key, dimly lit, and rim lighting. It might be a bit overboard, but I wanted to kind of overemphasize the effect. We're going to do two different types of generations with a strength of 30. We're going to go ahead and click make four images, and then we're going to generate another four images at 100% or one. And let's do some comparisons. Even though I'm using the same seed, I'm adding words to the prompt. This is going to make the image slightly different. Let's take a look at the first set of images. Here's the original generation. Then we have it here at 30% and here at 100%. Obviously, the 100% is way too dark. But you'll notice the little details change as well. If we look at the little candle thing here, it changes with every generation. Even the patterns of the outfits and the head accessory here, very different variations. But it's more about the effect that we're looking for here. With this image, we see a greater variation. So here is the original. This one was at 30% and this one was at 100%. 
So this particular Laura is sort of like a post-production Laura where instead of prompting a dimly lit scene or high contrast, that type of thing, we could just use the Laura to get that effect. Let's do one more example and I'm going to use high poly 3D. The first one we'll do at 30% once again. And we also added the trigger words 3D realistic intricate detailed. Let's click on four images. And then we'll do another set at about 80%. Here are the results of high poly 3D. So here we have the original image adjusted with the LoRa at 30% and then 80%. Obviously, the higher the number, the more variance you're going to get. Whereas with 30%, it still honors the original image, but changes the style quite a bit. This Laura gives you a bit more of a 3D look. So if you look at the original Dream Shaper here, this one's starting to look just a bit more photorealistic. So it gives it a little bit of a boost there. So it's a great way to take your favorite models and enhance them to give them a new look and a new style. I will tell you there's more than enough Lauras available for you to download and use. Now if you really want to learn how to train Lauras yourself, I'll leave links in the description below on two videos that I learned how to do them. As much as I love all of this, I really just want to focus on the creative side. And as always my friends, if you have any more questions regarding this video or anything else regarding Easy Diffusion, let me know in the comments below. But until the next video, I'll see you when I see you.